Welcome to The Vocalist Magazine Presents. I'm your host, Anna. If you ever feel like escaping the exasperations of every day or just the noise of the city, the relaxing cinematic sound of today's band is fit for just that. Punctuated by somewhat abstract lyrics, their music is filled with imagery, while their vivid musical arrangements are quite vast and yet manage to somehow feel intimate. They've released three albums since coming together in 2004, and over the years, their music has been featured in a number of films and shows. Right now, get ready to escape with Surface of Atlantic. Surface of Atlantic uh, has really uh, led me to explore uh, new territories in music, you know. Um, it really enabled me to go and, and find some sounds that I never would have imagined, uh, you know, if I hadn't been in the project. And uh, this is really, you know, uh, a, great, a great place to just like, you know, experiment and, and uh, meet different musicians that have great, uh, have a great musicianship and are able to um, write great songs, you know. I wrote these words in a constant passion You're getting blind with my prose I was born in Washington and um, my dad worked for the World Bank. So I ended up by traveling a lot. Like I went, I lived like four years in, in Belgium and then I, I moved to Egypt afterwards, four years. I moved to uh, Montreal uh, at the end uh, of high school to study at McGill. Uh, and uh, that was a big change for me, you know, coming up north in Canada. First time here, it was freezing. Uh, winters were really difficult. But um, uh, yeah, I, I really uh, learned a lot from being here, you know, and that this place is really bilingual. And since my mom is French, I always uh, grew up like in a sort of bilingual household. And uh, I really appreciated that of uh, Montreal uh, because uh, people uh, speak both languages and I felt like this was really my home, you know. No one is a ghost for your studies, yeah. and you're studying at McGill in medicine right now, uh, right? Well, actually, I did, I did my bachelor's at McGill, and then I went to University of Montreal to do my medical school. Uh, and uh, right now, I'm a resident in uh, immunology and allergy. So I did, like, uh, a lot of studies. I've been, like, studying for the past, like, 12 years, you know? And both of these disciplines, they require a lot of time. Is it ever difficult to balance the two? Uh, of course, yeah, that's, that's, that's a very difficult uh, thing to do because, you know, uh, medical school studies are pretty demanding and you have to, like, you know, always be studying and, you know, you, you work, like, long hours. But I've, I've always, you know, put some time aside to jam and to spend time recording and, and, uh, and, and writing and composing. So uh, I've been able to juggle both hobbies, both, both passions, actually. Uh, and uh, it's something that really keeps me going because, you know, if I wasn't, doing any music, I think I would probably be really, uh, really sad and miserable or just like studying all the time and stuff. So I'm glad I have that on the side too, yeah. Was there any music in your childhood? Yeah, well, while growing up, I, I played a lot of uh, piano. So I was formed as a classic, uh, in a classical background. I started like at the age of five. I played uh, concertos, I played uh, recitals, and I got a few awards too while growing up. I actually started my own band at the age of 16, and uh, uh, back then, uh, you know, I was inspired a lot by bands like Radiohead and, and British uh, music. I started playing the guitar too at the same time, and it's, yeah, I've had a pretty much pretty pretty big background in, in uh, music yeah, uh, before getting here. Uh, I got 
Our sound is uh, really based on layers. We got a lot of uh, keyboard layers, a lot of different guitar tones. And uh, it's not really about the chords that we play, but it's mainly about the way the chords sound. We use lots of echoes and the sound of the room too. When we use a piano, we, we, we record the room too. So that, that's a big part of our sound. So we can spend uh, days and days just working on one note, you know, being like, well, you know, this note has to sound exactly like that. This amp has to be positioned in this direction. This mic has to be put in this kind of position. Each sound has to be placed the right uh, position in the song. Uh, our tones are, you know, all really uh, well thought of, and and uh, we use a lot of, um, of, of textures like ambient layers and 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 uh, also different guitar tones that you can hear a lot in our music. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we hear that, oh, that's Marco Tone. Marco Tone is just a Fender Mustang through an old amp with lots of reverb and echo, and it's not super clean. It's it's in between. Sometimes it's a bit of overdrive, saturation from, you know, a, a name that just want to blow, you know. That's my sound, Marco Tone. <laughs>
we are friends and then after we are, we are a musician, we, we just like to hang out together. Most bands just do it for, um, for the money or in, in search of money. It's not the case with us. We just like to hang out, have a beer, play music. We all don't have uh, big egos, you know? I mean, if someone proposes something, we're gonna be like, well, yeah, let's try it out, you know? No one's really like, you know, I'm, I'm the front man, I'm the guy who decides, and I make the choices, you know? So I think that's helped a lot uh, to, to keep the band together and, and, uh, and enable us to be together for such a long time, you know? Because 10 years is a long time for a band, you know? I mean, there aren't many bands who stick together that long. That's why we're gonna stay at least another 10 years together in the future, I hope. I'm pretty sure. And what's a typical jam session like when you're trying to create? Does everyone kind of uh, uh, come with their own ideas for their own instruments? It's a sort of uh, uh, a combination of things. So. Uh, what happens is that sometimes, you know, uh, I play around with some sounds and, and, and some really nice pads and textures. And uh, for example, uh, Mark will come in with a, with, a, with a riff that sort of fits with my sounds. I try to, um, to add not much guitars, but space, you know? It's hard to explain, but I don't want to play like da 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 all the time, you know? I want, I want to play a note, like, to me, notes are expensive, you know? You, you have to... Um, to spend them correctly. So I just pour some echoes and some notes, but not too much, you know, just the right, the right level, you know? It's sort of a, a process that, that, that comes like uh, in a natural way. I mean, it's difficult to explain, but uh, so, you know, I think it's all about finding the right chords that sound, uh, that sound good to, to us. And, and from there, you know, the vocals come in, the bass comes in, the drums come in. And um, we tape all of our jams, so let's say we play for like three or four hours, we're gonna listen back to it, and then we're gonna be like, well, hey, this, song, this, this segment here was really fantastic. I think we should keep that segment, and we sort of take it and glue it with a different segment that we played. And then we're like, oh, these two segments could fit in really well together. And once we have those two segments together, then we sort of build a song out of that. And you know, obviously the vocals are just mumbling, it's kind of like, no, 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 at the beginning. But after, like at the very end, we sort of write the lyrics and, and find the lyrics that fit with the, with the song, you know? And some of your music has actually been featured in films and in shows, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, yeah, we, we were lucky. I mean, honestly, like the biggest uh, breakthrough for us was really to be in the movie of uh, Xavier Dolan, who's a really big producer in Quebec, probably one of the, the biggest ones. And he approached us, you know, uh, right before releasing his first movie called J'ai Tué Ma Mère. And back then I had no idea who this guy was, you know, so I was like, just, he, called me, cause, uh, he called me on my cell phone, he's like, hey, I really like your songs, I love your album, you know, can I feature some of your songs on my movie? And I'm like, yeah. And in the end, you know, like the songs really, I mean, it was really a great movie and it came out to win a few awards at the Cannes Festival and stuff, so it was all good, uh, good for us. We also, you know, got signed on a label in China, so they're like distributing our music over there, which is, which is cool. Actually, like, realized we sold a really lot of albums over there. We didn't see that much cash revenue from it, but you know, they gave us a statement and we were like, wow, that's a lot of albums, you know? Because <laughs> I think, you know, there's just so many people that they can, you know, just promote the hell out of us over there. And a lot of people like that song music. So, uh, so it's, it's pretty cool, yeah. From vault 
sides of the glass A year without the light A young killer on the Long days, long nights From both sides of the glass It's what we I grew a Roman again Somewhere you got it from Try the best that I can with a band, there always are a lot of challenges, you know? I mean, first of all, it's getting people together to jam. I mean, it's, it's five people with different lives, so it's always, you know, schedules to, uh, to get by. Uh, you know, you gotta you got sort of uh, make sure that everyone can make it that date, et cetera. I mean, that's the first obstacle for, uh, for any band, you know? Other obstacles, um, I guess it's, it's been promoting the band. It's been pretty difficult, I guess, because uh, you realize, you know, uh, you spend a lot of time in the studio uh, writing songs, you know, composing. It takes years and years. And then finally, you release this great album with a great cover. And you're like, hey, my album's here. And, and you're like, well, oh, <laughs> I've got like 50 likes, you know. You're like, okay, 50 CDs sold. You're like, well, uh, <laughs> I wish you could have sold more albums, you know, because I feel like, you know, it could be, it could be uh, I guess it could, could, could uh, appeal to more people. It's very difficult to get the attention of, 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 of uh, journals, you know. For example, you send your album out, you never hear back from them. I think that's sort of daily struggle of any musician out there, you know. But uh, slowly but surely, uh, you know, uh, after being persistent and you send your album again and again and again, finally someone picks it up and is like, hey, yeah, sure, I'd like to talk to you about your album, your new, your new album out. So. That's, uh, you know, I think you gotta be really persistent and, and not be discouraged by the fact that sometimes uh, media outlets don't really pay attention uh, to, to, your, to your music, you know, I mean, because there's just so many bands out there that, uh, you know, it's hard to stick out really, I mean. I think we can go there tomorrow, it's 
How do you find that the album is different from the previous two? Oh, it's, I hope it's different. It was the goal. Um, it's more simple, I think. It sounds um, less polished, I think. Um, and it's more crazy, <laughs> even it's not very crazy. Um, you know, the mix of it, the, um, the new instruments, uh, the new guitars that we bought over the years. Um, and this is the first time we don't use uh, strings, you know, uh, violins and stuff. This is the first album, there's none. And that was a, a big challenge for us to see uh, how naked we would feel without strings. So what is it that motivates you to not be discouraged and to keep doing this? Well, I think the main, the main thing is just because, you know, you don't really do it to, to be famous or whatever or to, uh, you know, uh, make money out of it, you know? I think it's really uh, just, uh, you know, a fundamental passion. It's something that you love doing, you know, while you're jamming or just having such a great time. You're just enjoying the moment, you know? And that's what it is. You, you can't really decide to, to write an album and create songs to, to make it big, you know? I think it's just, you know, enjoying the moment, writing amazing songs, doing albums, being able to do that with some great friends. That's what it's all about. And what else do you want to accomplish in the next 10 years? Doctor by day, musician by night? <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's pretty much what I want to be, you know? I mean, uh, sort of uh, work f five days a week as a doctor and during the weekends uh, play gigs, you know? <laughs> I think music will always be a part of my life and um, I think we're, we're going to produce a lot of albums with Surface of Atlantic, you know? This is our third one. We know we're going to do a fourth one, a fifth one, till, until whenever, you know? Because we're just good friends and we get along well and, uh, and that's, that's what we're going to do. And, and same thing for other projects, you know, I'm always interested in exploring new areas of music and new styles. So uh, I think, I think uh, you know, in the next 10 years, I can see myself having, you know, a few more albums out, hopefully. And <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a great next 10 years, I think. Yeah.